And good morning, Memorial United Methodist Church. How are you doing today? Hey, are you ready to worship our Lord Jesus Christ? My name is Watanak Hing. It is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Friends who are worshiping with us online, I'm so happy that you are here with us. I pray that the Spirit is with you wherever you are. Let me welcome you all. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest United Methodist Church in the world. Yeah, I'm so happy you are here today, friends. This is a community of faith. We come here every Sunday and many other days throughout the week to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the main reason we are here today. Christ died for us. He forgives us all. He has changed our life and we cannot wait to build a relationship with him, to know him more each and every day, and especially by coming here, by coming here to worship him every Sunday. Amen? All right, friends, let me ask you again. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. All right, that's great. We're going to have a great day today. Today's service is made in such a way that it's also welcoming our Hmong community as well. Once every three months, on the, the month that had the fifth Sunday, we have a combined worship service. And so therefore today, the song will be sung in English and also in Hmong, all right? And I don't think we need a translator today. I guess because the sermon is a little longer. But anyway, I'm so happy to have you all here today. It is just an FYI, especially for those who are here, uh, very new here. Now, before we start our worship service, I would like to invite the acolyte. The acolyte come down with the candle, the spirit, the light of Christ. The light of Christ is reminding us that God is with us all, friends. Wherever there is a gathering of two or three or more of believers coming together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is with us. And so I pray that today's service will encourage you. Today's service will inspire you. It will make you a better believer, that it will take you out of this place with courage with inspiration, and you know that purpose that God has given for you. Without further ado, I would like to invite Ruby to lead us into a time of worship. Ruby? Good morning, church. And for those of you watching online, good morning to you too, and happy Sunday to everyone. So my name is Ruby Bagel, and I am your liturgist this morning. Again, I work with the youth group ages 12 to 19. So I invite you all to, in, to join us every Wednesday, hanging out with Jesus for, uh, at 6 o'clock in the evening via Zoom. So you don't have to be a youth to join us. I want to share with you that yesterday we had our ethnic gathering it's the ethnic summit sponsored by the age uh, by our uh california nevada uh conference and so um and the pastor was uh with us as well so we had a breakout session and i joined the youth group that really makes me feel young so and one of the questions that uh was given to us if the youth group is given fifty thousand dollars what would you do and so my, my answer was very quick. I said, we know that 30,000 will go to the youth building and 20,000 will go to hire a youth director. And so there goes our 50,000. So <laughs> yeah, and so it was, it was such a, a very fruitful uh, gathering. And so one of the things that the, one of the youth said they need a space. Their, pact, their pastor gave them a space in the sanctuary. And so space is very valuable. So I, you know, I share with them, we have a space, but we need to fix the space. So folks here, we're pitching for the youth building and our Sunday school class last Sunday decided to give our Sunday school offering to the youth building renovation. So I encourage everyone, you know, we all eat three meals a day. Every one of us eat three meals a day in this congregation. We probably do four snacks a day. So our kids, our youth is homeless. So <laughs> they need a house. 
So think of them when you drink your coffee, when, you know, our youth is homeless. They need a place. And so that is very critical yesterday in our group discussion. They need a space. So we need to support our youth. We need to make them feel that we really value them. Okay? And that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my joy and concern. Please join me in our call to worship responsibly. Come, hear the call of God. Speak of me to my people. I will give you the words. I will always be with you as you speak my words of truth and justice and love. You have given us. And now let's join us in our opening hymn. And if you're able, please stand. They will know we are Christians by our love. All right, friends. You know this song. Are you ready to sing and worship God? We're going to sing in English and then we're going to sing in Hmong. Okay, two verses. I ask that you will sing loud and proud together. And if you want, you can clap along. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they know we are Christians by our love, by our love. seated and let's all say the Lord's Prayer who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you are able, please rise for the reading of the scripture. It is in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 to 30. Then he began to say to them, 
Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will go to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Seraphat in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. These are the words of God for the people of God. Say amen. amen. Friends, we always have a great time with our children program. <clears throat> I pray that you will continue to pray for our children. My wife is back. My children are back, and they dress up in the Niners. Go Niners! Whoop! Sorry to use the stage. My wife is gonna lead us into a time of children's moment. Okay, thank you. Good morning. All right. Good morning, children of God. How are we all doing today? Thumbs up. We're doing amazing because we're so happy to be here. Sideway thumbs, we're not sure yet. Upside down thumbs. Today is just not one of those days. How are we feeling, Philo? Oh, sideway thumbs. Shiloh, how are you feeling? Thumbs up? Yes, awesome. What about you, Emily? How are you feeling today, sweetheart? Elena? I said, Elena, not Emily's turn. <laughs> what do you call it? You don't know yet? It's okay. Sideway thumbs for you too. What is it with kids in this age range and their sideway thumbs? How about you? How are you feeling today? Thumbs up. That's awesome. I love your face mask. <laughs> all right. I missed you all last Sunday. I was so disappointed that I couldn't be here, but we wanted to make sure that we were safe to come to church. All right, oops, that's the wrong page. So, have you guys ever heard of something called a mission statement? I mean, I haven't heard of that, but I've heard of a, like a California mission. Oh, a California mission, but not a mission statement. What about you, Emily? Have you heard of something called a mission statement? No? Okay. Do you guys have an idea what it could be? No? The song that now I'm thinking of when you and Papa oh. went to Israel. Oh, okay. And? Oh, you're thinking of like going on a mission trip? Yeah, that kind of <laughs> Well, that was more like a pilgrimage, and it's very different from, so a mission statement is like a short paragraph, right? That says the goals and values of an organization, a company, or of a person, right? Do you guys know what our, our, our church's mission statement is? Our church has one. And it's awesome. I'll tell you. It is to show and tell Jesus' love everywhere. All right? And then our church is part of a big, whole, connectional church. 
because there are so many Methodist churches all over the United States and also in other parts of the world, right? So their church of the United Methodist Church, their mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Wow, isn't that a pretty strong mission statement? That's pretty awesome, huh? Because if everybody can be di disciples of Jesus, don't you think this world would be so much better? It would be. So today, well not today, last week you guys heard of um, Jesus' mission statement. You guys remember in this um, last week's um, Bible scripture, Jesus went to the town that he was born in, or not where he was from, he was born in Bethlehem, so he went to Nazareth. And he went to a temple, he got invited to read the ancient holy scriptures. And when he read it to the people, he also said that it has been fulfilled, that God will send a Messiah to bring his people together, to heal the sick, to set the prisoners free, to feed the hungry, to make the people that have some form of disability to be abled. Like if they can't walk, they are able to walk. Have you guys, do you guys remember something about that? Last week, well, you didn't come to church, but what about you guys? It's okay if you don't remember. So when he said, now that has been fulfilled, what do you think the people were feeling when they heard that? You think they believed? Uh, I think they feel felt confused. Confused? Yeah. Would you feel confused if Jesus got invited to come speak at church? Uh, I do not know. No, but if you knew he was Jesus, you knew who he was, I wouldn't be confused. I'd be so excited. I would want to take selfies with Jesus too. <laughs> okay, so this is what Jesus was up against. So when he said that and people didn't believe him, that was sort of like he kind of got rejected. So if you guys ever feel rejected, just know that Jesus knows exactly what that feels like. But that's okay because he continued on with his ministry. He continued to perform most amazing miracles, right? And made believers out of people too. Believers out of people like us that have never seen him, right? But we believe because we have this thing called faith. All right, so let's all bow our heads in prayer. Close your eyes, you can repeat after me if you're comfortable. Dear Jesus, what an amazing mission statement. Help us to live within your mission and show the people your compassion and love in all that we do. Help us to shine with God's light so that others may see the glory of God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You guys are welcome to go back to your seats. Today, we are not having to celebrate new members. But we see there are a lot of new people in the house. We have our Hmong family who are joining us today. Uh, I think they used to be here too. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much. I'm glad you are here. I also am very happy that uh, I have five friends from my previous church in Stockton, the Cambodian language ministry, that I used to serve as a, as a volunteer as an, uh, in, for my internship while I was going to school in Indiana. And they are here with us. Let's give them a big round of applause. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the gentlemen actually is a retired pastor from that church. And he was the one who picked me up when I was looking for a church to serve. 
Nobody else accepted me, different denomination I was looking to, but the United Methodist Church opened the door for me, and here I am today, amen? Amen, amen. <clears throat> All right, friends, before I start my sermon, I give a little funny story. I hope this one is great. This is about a Sunday school teacher. She is teaching his kid, her kids about what it means to be right and wrong, right? And so today, she gave a very good example. She said, look, guys, who am I if I took a wallet out of a man's pocket and take all the money? Philo, the son of the pastor, raised his hand and stood up and said, you would be his wife. Oh, <laughs> well, the wisdom of the five-year-old, right? Or the nine-year-old. Let us bow our head in time of prayer today, friends. I'm going to give you a couple minutes in time of silent prayer. At this time, you can go to God in time of silence. Give him the prayer of petition, or prayer request, or prayer of thanksgiving. Or just be in complete silence, asking that God will speak to you. Maybe you will hear a voice or a nudge that is going to inspire you, that will make you leave this place being a different person. Let us be in the spirit of prayer for a time of silent prayer. Lord Jesus, let us start with our prayer of thanksgiving. We love you so very much. Thank you for giving us life and especially the freedom to worship you in this place. Lord, thank you for being who you are and having led us so far, the life that is so precious. Thank you, Lord, for your transforming love. Today we come and to worship you. Lord, we are here to to give it all to you, we ask that you will speak to each and every one of us. May our prayers be received by your power. May your word speak into each and every one of us and transform us and make us to become a better disciple for you. Lord, at this time, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight. Because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture today that you just heard, that you just read, is from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 21 to verse 30. It is the continuation from the last week's scripture when Jesus came to Nazareth, to his hometown, and on the Sabbath day, on the day that the, that, 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 that the villager come to worship, Jesus opened up the book and preach his first sermon. Look at this picture. The disciples were listening. The followers were trying to understand what is Jesus going to say? It is a simply reading from the book of Isaiah. If you go to Israel, you will go to this place that is very simple, a synagogue, a worship place. People are sitting around that stairways and in a small circle, listening to a rabbi, somebody who is able to read the scripture and then explain what that scripture means. But then everybody was so amazed. Everybody was so excited about the teaching of Christ. They were so overjoyed. They were like, wow, that is such a great teaching. After Jesus told them the mission that he was supposed to be doing. Then a the question come into mind. A big question found in verse 22, it said, Isn't this Joseph's son? Wait, is this boy, remember him? He is Joseph's son. 
Who is Joseph, the carpenter? In the tradition, you see the sons follow the father's trait. If the father were the carpenter, the son was supposed to be the carpenter to carry the trait of the family, to keep the honor of the family. But, but isn't he Joseph's son? What is he doing here? Why is he so great? Why he is he so eloquent? What has he learned? What is going on here? Who is he? Isn't he Joseph's son? Look at each other now in the room. Look to your left. Look to the right. Isn't he Joe the plumber? Isn't he Jim the bricklayer? Isn't he Bill? Isn't he Jim? Isn't he the son of this and that? Isn't he the grandma of his and him? What is going on here? What is going on? Who are you? Who are you? Is God with you right now? Whatever you do, even in your occupation, wherever you work, even when you are volunteering yourself for your children to take care of your grandchildren, will they ask you the question, are you Jim, my grandma, my grandpa? Are you Susan, my neighbor? Isn't this and that? Is Jesus with you wherever you are, friends? Are you going to work with Christ in you? Let me remind you this. Wherever you are, please do not feel like you are alone. Christ is with you, working alongside with you. And make sure your friends, your neighbor, your children, your grandchildren see that Christ is in you. You are not just a simple Joe. You are not just a simple Jim. You are not just a simple Richard. But you are Christ's follower. You are going to change the world with the power of Christ. Look at what Jesus is doing. Isn't he Joseph's son? No, he is not just only Joseph's son. He is the son of God who is going to transform life, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Can I hear hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that. But then Jesus moved a little deeper. In verse 40, 25, 26, he mentioned the story in the Old Testament. He said, remember when the world was in famine? It was three years, six months. But Elijah, one of the great prophets, was sent to a widow of Sidon. You know why it is mentioned Sidon? Because Sidon is not the Israelite. Because Sidon was not in Jerusalem. Because Sidon, people of Sidon, is the Gentiles. It's not one of them. Jesus is saying, our great prophet does not just only take care of us, but he went beyond the boundary and go reach out to people outside our group as well. God's love is open wide, friend. Open the circle. The circle go, the circle go wider and wider. In verse 26, Jesus even mentioned another prophet, not just only Elijah, but Elisha. There's another great prophet who healed Naaman, a general, the general not of the Israelite, but of the Syrians. The Syrian general was healed by the power of the prophet of God. Jesus is saying God is reaching out to everybody around the world, not just only us. Ooh, but this story does not settle well with the people who are listening. They were so mad. They were so furious. They thought, well, wait, 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 wait. Are we not the special one? Are we not the elected? Are we not the center of the universe? Isn't the world revolving around us? Everything should be us, 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 me first. What are you talking about here? Jesus is kind of stirring them up. And they were like, what is going on? I don't like this message. This message is different. And what they were doing is in verse 29 or 30, and they rose up and thrust him out of the city and let him unto the brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passed, 
he passing through the midst of them went his way. Wow, watch out with your anger, friends. Watch out with your theology, friends. Watch out with your thinking, friends. Sometimes because of your anger, because sometimes because of your presupposition, sometimes because you think you know it all, you don't accept any new teaching. And what you want to do is you want to push him off the cliff. You are so exclusive. It is all about us. Your circle is so small. And you become very irritated. Somebody is stirring us up. Somebody is touching me in the wrong spot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push him off the street. I'm gonna push him off the circle. I'm gonna push him off the cliff. I think the best, the word, a very good question is, would you? Would you push him off the cliff? Let me, let me confess this. When I was reading the scripture, I was thinking about me. I was like, wait, I'm here starting on July 1st, trying to help people, seeing things, doing new things, pushing people to, to move forward, to move a step further, to be more courageous, to be more generous and everything. Will they push me off the cliff? I was like, ooh, what is going on? The problem is, with Jesus, he can all of a sudden vanish away from them. I don't have that power. If one day a few of you come to me and said, Pastor, I want to take you to Yosemite. Let's go see the half dome. You gotta be very careful. I don't have that power to vanish. But no. How about you? When were you that, when were that time that you think you want to push Jesus off the cliff? Have you ever thought about that? How about when Jesus didn't answer your prayer immediately? Man, why didn't he do that? How about when somebody disappoints you so hard and you didn't see the power of God reconciling in the problem, in the situation, you want to push Jesus off the cliff? How about when Jesus is trying to, to work with your finance? And you said, Jesus, can you stay the side on the side? I just want to think about my finance, my way at this time. I don't want you to involve. Drop the mic, mic drop. Yeah. What's going on here? When was that time that you want to push? Jesus of the cliff. Then I think about us all. I know that you all are very resilient. I know you all have a lot of good legacy in you. You will never push Jesus off the cliff, but you will come together and work with each other for the betterment, for the kingdom of God. Can I hear hallelujah for that? Because when I think of you, I think about the history that we carry for so long. Look at this church. The church that we started in, in 1863, the Methodist Church of Clovis happened in a town called Academy. We were working together so long, so well, and we grew and grew and grew until now we come to this wonderful facility. We have our legacy. We have our root of love. We've been doing great things throughout the history, the history of California, and the history is still in the making. And we are working together until today. Friends, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Despite the, 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 despite the fact that the pandemic has been hitting us the last two years, we never stop doing the mission of our Lord let me report to you proudly, in year 2021, we were hit hard by COVID. We only came to worship the last six months of the year. But we together gave to the World Mission $21,037.81. Can I hear hallelujah for that? Look at who we are. Look at what we can do and how we all work.
working together. None of you can do this by yourself, but all together. We give 21,037 and 81 cent exact number that I got from our, uh, our awesome finance. This is for the world mission. This is to support the missionaries around the world. This is to support schools, new churches, hospital, sanitation project, every other project that the General Board of Global Ministry and the United Methodist World Service is working together for the betterment, for the betterment of the kingdom of God here in this place. Can I hear the hallelujah for that? That's amazing, friends. Better yet, better yet, this year, we are only $793.2 in red. Can you imagine? Woohoo! That is just amazing. I know some of you will say, what, but we're still in red. And I also know maybe some of you are thinking right now, Pastor, can I pay it backward so that we can break it even? I said, yes. Diane just said, yes. You can write your check and you can backdate whenever you want. We will make sure we'll cast that check. Right? Can I hear a hallelujah for that? $793 in the red? Come on now. And $21,000 to the world mission? Wow, look at how far we come together. You may say, well, we don't have, we have to see. What, we, what do we compare to? Well, let me give you a, just a little number. In 2020, we got hit even harder, right? Because we only could have service only the first two months. And then starting from March, we stopped having service. But then we still had to pay everything. And that year, we gave around $10,000 to the world mission. And guess what happened to the end of the book? We were 38K, $38,000 in the red. This year, we gave 21000 and we are only $800 in the red. Oh, wow. If you don't see the miracle of God here, I don't know how I can explain to you this. Can I hear hallelujah for this? Hallelujah. God is amazing, friends. We are doing this together. Last week, after the church, we went outside and we stand in front of our youth building. When I was looking at the picture and ready to post a picture online, I see the word resurrection. The resurrection of our youth building. The youth building was dead for a while. Now it is coming back to life. Can I hear the hallelujah for that? Hallelujah. It is coming back to life. And you know, I used to give you that dateline. I was like, can we finish this project by June? I think that's a good timeline to finish this project. But because of the word resurrection, can I challenge you that we should finish this project by April the 17th, Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we have a lot of baptism going on, we will also celebrate the resurrection of our youth meeting. Can we do that? Can I hear yes from everybody? Hallelujah. Let's give God a big round of applause. Oh. Lord Jesus, you are amazing. And friends, let me tell you this. It come back to verse 21 when Jesus said, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's been fulfilled in your hearing. We are here together because we know what God has been working in us. God has been with us so far and he will never stop. He will continue to work in us throughout the history of this country, of this place, of this city. The song that I think about is God of this city from Chris Tomlin. You're the God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. And there is no one like our God. And there is no one like our God. And greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. And greater things have yet to come. And greater things are still to be done here. Here in this place, there are a lot of great other things that God has given us. 
that we are able to do. We all together can do this. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 37 also say, For with God nothing is impossible, friends. Nothing is impossible. And we can do all this, not by ourselves, but all of us will do this together. Amen? I want you to share love with one another. Remember what I always say? I love you. Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Can we say this all together? One, two, three. I love you, and Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Friends, Jesus loves you so very much that he want to make sure you go out and live the life that God has called you to do, to be, and to change. Remember on that last Thursday night, when Jesus brought his disciples together, Jesus was sitting around that table. He called his disciples together. Before the dinner started, Jesus broke the bread. And gave thanks to God. And gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you, friends. Everything has been done for all of us. Christ died on the cross for us all. When the disciples took the bread, eat the bread, and saw the life of Christ on the cross, saw all the the bruise, the wound, the blood of Christ on the cross. They know Christ done it for us all. When you came in, you were given the communion element. The first layer is the wafer. In our church, everybody is welcome to receive the Holy Communion. I pray that when you take the Holy Communion, God will meet you wherever you are. That your life is transformed from that time. At the end of the dinner, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin, friends. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Friends, when you drink the juice from the cup given to you, I pray that the Spirit of God will meet you wherever you are, that you remember the sacrificial love of Christ that has been given to you. At this time, friends, I want to invite you to be in times of contemplative prayer. Maybe you want to come to the communion near rail, kneel and pray to God as we are singing the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Or you want to go to the candlelight station. You light the candle there, representing the light of Christ wherever there is darkness. Or I ask you, that you would join with me in time of singing today. That we sing with our whole heart, declaring to our God that we have decided to follow Jesus. And that the world is behind us. That nobody, even nobody followed Jesus. We still follow Jesus. Let us sing with me together. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The one behind me, the cross behind me. 
Friends, I pray that the Spirit of God is with you as you decide to follow Jesus. Friend, I also want to say thank you so much for your generous offering, your love, your love to this wonderful community, your love to the mission of the world. I pray that you will continue to support the effort that we are trying to reach out to the world to make this place a welcoming place for so many others. I pray that one day our church will be filled with believers of Christ who come and worship our Lord Jesus Christ. And we cannot do all that because of your support. You can continue to write your check to our church or you can give online as well. You can go to Memorial United Methodist Church online that you can give electronically. Or you just aim your camera toward the QR code. It will lead you into the website that you can give online. Once again, friends, your love and your generous support is very meaningful to us. Let us now give God a prayer of thanksgiving. And you can join with me and you can find it on the screen or in your bulletin as well. Gracious and loving God, receive our gifts of self and sustenance. They may belong to you. We give them freely, joyfully, prayerfully. With them, we praise you. With them, we celebrate the great power that is love, a love that abides always, a love that radically transforms, a love that makes us whole. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand for a time of doxology? Let's sing praise God. Praise God from While you're still standing, let us sing together a closing song, Shalom. That is from the United Methodist Hymnal, number 667. Let us sing loud and proud. We'll sing in English and in Hmong.
Go in peace, friend. May the Spirit of God be with you. This should conclude our service. I'll see you all next week. God bless you.